You are now listening to the Pelicans Post Game Report. Flash For Report. All things Pelicans, you're now tuned into the Pelican Post Game Report. Flash Report coming at you, dropping uh, the knowledge upon the Pelicans win over the Sacramento Kings 128 to 123 in Sacktown. A nice win by the Pelicans. You know, they break this slide. Uh, now they approved to five and seven with a nice win over the Sacramento Kings. They got a little bit high up there as they put 128 up, but allowed the Kings to get 123 in a good matchup of battling between two really young stars in this league, Zion against De'Aaron Fox, who's absolutely terrific. But in this one, uh, a lot of the statistics are on screen for the matchup and we'll go over it momentarily. But man, uh, big ups to the Pelicans breaking the five game slide, getting a nice win against Sacramento. Uh, uh, and, and listen, this was a positive. This was a big positive win right here for them to finally show up and do something. And now, like we saying, taking it game by game, putting your, you know, putting your feet in the sand and standing and fighting with everything you have. They didn't completely figure out everything, but the effort was there. You know what I mean? They made shots. The effort was there. Let's go over the statistics briefly. 45-85 for the Pels. They shot just uh, 53% from the field, which is really good. They were 11 of 22 from downtown. That's 50% as well in the matchup as the three started to fall. They shot 79% from the free throw line, which was really good. 27 of 34. They out-rebounded the Sacramento Kings 54 to 39 with 14 offensive rebounds versus and, and with 34 defensive rebounds. They out-assisted the Kings 24 to 23 as well. They didn't out steal them, which was five to seven advantage of the Kings, but not but not bad. And turnovers. The Pelicans had 14 turnovers. The Kings 11, 18 points off of turnovers, 14 for the Kings in a matchup, but which they, you know, they were battling in the paint, put up 60 points in the paint. The Kings had 66 in the matchup. So the largest lead of the game was 19 points in which the Pelicans were able to kind of do some stuff early on uh, in the matchup starting off in the first quarter. But ultimately, it was a battle in the second half that kind of moved things in their proper perspective. Now, before we get to the individual statistics, here's Coach Van Gundy with his thoughts on what happened in the Pelicans win. JJ just said that last night was probably, I guess, the best spacing you guys have had as a team. Um, he thought, um, I know, I mean, you guys are, you guys have a distinct style, but like within that distinct style, I mean, how do you, what are things you did or, or can do to, to have good spacing? Look, I, I, it's just something that for us is not, is not as um, easy or as natural uh, for teams that are playing four or five, you know, guys at a time that stretch the floor. So it's not as as natural for us. So it's something that we have to pay a lot of attention to. And I thought last night in the game that our guys, um, you know, really paid attention to it and tried to do a better job of stay facing the floor. So it's really, you know, their attention to detail, I think, that helped. Yeah, what's up, Stan? Uh, you talked before about how you guys are continue to try to uh, – Zion get Zion's game just give him different things he could do within the offense just how does it change the dynamics of, of the offense when he's a driver versus when he's posting up or when he's operating the screen and roll well I think we need him to do all of those things right I think he needs to be a post-up guy I think he needs to be a uh, uh, a guy on the perimeter who can drive the ball or cut I think he needs to be a pick and roll guy setting screens. I think he needs to be a pick and roll guy handling the ball. I, I think he needs to be able to do all of those things. And I think he needs to be a guy leading the fast break and busting out. And so, um, you know, I, I think he's starting to take advantage of those opportunities and we're, and we're trying to give him as many of those opportunities as we can. Um, because I think you want to use all of his abilities, not just some of them. Um, and he'll have this. He'll have different advantages in different matchups. Coach Van Gundy's thoughts on the game dealing with Zion and how the team played. Very interesting matchup. Good to see the Pelicans fight through this one, man. A lot of confidence. Zion Williamson was absolutely awesome. He was a brute. Played with force. 
I mean, he was knocking guys around. It was really magnificent to see Zion get into the Florida matchup. He finished with 31 points out of 35 minutes. He was 13 of 15 from the field, 5 of 5 from the free throw line. He finished with 31 points and 6 rebounds in the matchup. He was the power for the Pelicans, and I mean, it mean that figuratively and literally taking the Pelicans upon his shoulders and willing them to a win. Also, B.I. was in there with 22 points uh, on the night. He had the five turnovers, but still contributed 22 points in 35 minutes. He went eight of 19 from the field, three of seven from downtown, three of four from the free throw line, 21 points from Eric Bledsoe in 30 minutes, eight of 14 from the field, three of four from downtown, two of two from the line. He finished with 21 points, six rebounds in the matchup. You look at Steven Adams, 32 points, and he went his double-double way, 12 points, 15 boards in the matchup, big for him as well. In NAW with his uh, several straight start in the matchup, he finished with nine points in 33 minutes. He was three of eight from the field, one of three from downtown, two of five from the line. He finished with nine points in the matchup. The bench, four guys off the bench, uh, got some minutes. Just good to see Kira Lewis. And in a W in the matchup, even though uh, Kira only finished with three points and five assists, but he helped facilitate something. His shot wasn't there to, uh, in this matchup. One of five from the field uh, in 15 minutes. So 11 points from Jackson Hayes. As you're starting to see Jackson come along, 11 points from him in 16 minutes, four of six from the field. Very efficient from Jackson. Even snatched six rebounds in the matchup as well. And a top guy off the bench, J.J. Reddit, 18 minutes. He had 14 points and three assists in the matchup. He was three or five from the field, three or five from downtown, five or five from the free throw line. As we starting to see J.J. Reddit come up out of that slump. So it's good to see that. And of course, Josh Hart, who only took five shots. He was two of five from the field, one of three from downtown. He finished with five points and three assists with five rebounds in 25 minutes. No one else played, but the Pelicans, high energy, a lot of power. Zion Williamson, a brute in the paint, doing what he do, dunking on, dunking on guys, knocking guys around. It was good to see that force as the Pelicans said, you know what? Enough is enough. We're going to put our feet in the sand. We're going to make a stand and we're going to get this matchup. So a big win for the Pelicans, nonetheless, and the matchup. Uh, and, and listen, keep it going. They have a really difficult matchup next as they go against Utah. The Jazz are on the slate. Utah and the Pelicans, they're looking for a six straight victory. And that's Utah. Now we go over a bit of information. The Pelicans 5-7, 12th in the, uh, in the Western Conference. Utah is 9-4. They're third in the Western Conference with that 9-4 record. This will be in Salt Lake City. It's another. It's an 8 o'clock start time. And, of course, the bottom line is Utah is looking to prolong its five-game win streak with a victory over the Pelicans. Utah went 44-28 and overall and 23-12 and at home. Last season, the Jazz allowed opponents to score 109 points per game and shoot 40, almost 46% from the field. All right. And of course, tonight's matchup, Derek Favors is day to day. So we don't know if he's going to be there. Jawan Morgan is out and Joe Ingles is out with an Achilles situation. And as reported on Pelicans point guard, Lonzo Ball still dealing with a knee issue. He is out in the matchup. So as Zoe sits, you see, you've seen a lot of NAW, you've seen a lot of Kira Lewis. So it's good to see some of those guys as well. Hopefully Stan Van can open up the bench for one more player, maybe another big, maybe a Winion Gabriel. I know I'm pushing Winion or maybe even Willie Hernan Gomez to a degree. You know, we need another hustle player in there, rebound guy. Hopefully he can get these guys up to, uh, you know, up to the level where they can actually come out and make an impact or have an impact for the Pelicans. So that'll be tonight. Pelicans against the Jazz. Pelicans looking to build upon their, uh, you know, win over the Kings with another win over a very good Utah team. And of course, like I told you, Utah winning five in a row at this point and looking to make it six. The Pelicans have to make a stop. This is a very difficult team. Let's get this W. So that'll do it for the Pelican Post Game Report Flash Report. Thank you guys for chiming in. We'll be back later on when the Pelicans with the Pelican Post Game Report uh, as we recap the Pelicans matchup with the Utah Jazz. I'm Big Q chiming in. Thank you all for being here. Go Pels. Subscribe now and stay up to date for all things New Orleans Pelicans. 